you've probably heard about all these new AI tools that can help with research, writing, and even creating art. But maybe you've also heard your teachers say that using AI can lend you a big fat zero in the gradebook. On the flip side, you might have come across something incredible online, like the viral AI generated artwork that won a prize. Except wait for it, it wasn't AI after all, it was a real photo. It feels like AI is everywhere. Powerful, useful, and full of potential. But at the same time, it's confusing. What's allowed, what's ethical, and how do you even know when or how to use it in the right way? That's what we're here to figure out. Hey everybody, welcome to AI Unlocked. This is a series brought to you by MediaWise and PBS News Student Reporting Lab, where we break down the world of artificial intelligence in ways you can actually understand. But hang on, it's kind of uncomfortable in here, isn't it? No furniture, nothing to sit on, just space. Let's fix that. How about we make a couch? And not just any couch, let's use generative AI to help us design one. Okay, here we go. Let's type in couch and see what AI comes up with. Uh, yeah. This doesn't look very comfortable. Like, who could even sit on this? Looks more like a couch for an alien. Hmm. We need to work on this AI thing a little. Let's break it down. How does AI create something like this in the first place? Generative AI, like the one we're using, is powered by something called an LLM, a large language model. Think of it as a super smart library with a twist. It doesn't just store information, it recognizes how to use it. Here's how it works. The AI processes tons of data, everything from books and articles to images and code. This is called training, and during training, the AI doesn't memorize facts. Instead, it identifies patterns and relationships between words, concepts, and visuals. So when you type a prompt like, make a couch, the AI isn't pulling a ready-made answer from a database. Instead, it's predicting what a couch might look like based on everything it learned during training. It works kind of like texting, when your phone suggests the next word, except here it's guessing way more complex ideas, like how to design an entire couch. When we use AI to help generate text, it's following the same procedure. The model recognizes patterns to determine which words should follow each other. It does this to build sentences, paragraphs, even entire books. The AI builds its response using tokens, tiny chunks of information, like words or parts of images. It puts these tokens together, step by step, until it creates something new. And that's how generative AI works. It takes what it's learned, guesses the best response, and creates something from scratch. But remember, it's not perfect, and it doesn't really understand what it's making. It's just really, really good at spotting patterns and following them. Now, let's refine this couch. Sometimes AI doesn't get it right on the first try, but we can tweak it. That's called tuning. Make the couch more comfortable and practical. See, we're giving it feedback. By challenging AI to do better, we help it improve over time. So where did all this AI magic come from? While the concept of generative AI seems brand new, it dates back to the 1950s to a man named Alan Turing, a British scientist and World War II codebreaker who first asked the question, can machines think? His work led to scientists in the 1960s and 70s creating artificial intelligence programs that solved puzzles and translated languages. But this wasn't generative AI. It wasn't creating anything new. Finally, in 2014, researchers created something called Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs. This sounds a bit complicated, but imagine two AIs trained on all kinds of data that are kind of like rivals, competing to create the best possible image or piece of writing. And it was this technology that brought us that generative AI that we know now, which can help us write music, brainstorm story ideas, design a video game, even solve complex medical questions. Today, AI gets developed by teams of engineers, researchers, and creators, and it's used in a ton of fields. In healthcare, generative AI is analyzing medical scans to detect diseases earlier. In art, it's helping people design stunning visuals and even write entire novels. Coders are using it to debug programs faster, and architects use it to plan smarter cities. In climate science, AI helps researchers model solutions to combat global warming. And in entertainment, it's revolutionizing how movies, games, and music are made. It's everywhere, and it's still just getting started. But here's the catch. AI isn't perfect, and it's not human. It doesn't think or feel, it just recognizes patterns in the data it's been trained on. And sometimes that data is biased or outdated. It can make mistakes. It might give you fake facts, incorrect quotes, or just outright make something up. Those are called hallucinations. The lesson here, make sure you double check any facts it gives you with other credible sources. It can also be biased. It is only as good as the information it is trained on, and because we have biases and hold unfair stereotypes, it might also pass those along in its answers. Be on the lookout. Bad actors may use AI to create fake news or fake images in an effort to manipulate your opinions or your choices. Later in this series, we will show you some ways to combat that. Here's another thing about AI. It's moving fast. Faster than most of us can keep up with. 
and as cool as it is now, it's only the beginning. That's why it's so important to future-proof yourself. So what does that even mean? It's about staying ready for change. AI is going to keep evolving, and sometimes it'll surprise us. Whole new tools and ways of working could pop up. Here's how you can be ready. First, keep learning. The more you understand what AI can and can't do, the better you'll be at spotting the opportunities and pitfalls. Second, ask questions. Don't just accept AI's answers at face value, challenge it. Ask it where it got its information and whether it's up to date. The more you interact with AI critically, the better you'll get at separating useful insights from noise. Finally, stay curious. When AI shifts in ways we don't expect, take the time to explore those changes. What's new? What's different? And what does it mean for the way you work, learn, or even create? The big takeaway? Don't let AI be a mystery. Be ready to rethink your approach when the next big leap comes. Now this looks like a couch I'd actually sit on. Comfortable, practical, and kind of stylish, right? But still not real. AI can do a lot, but there's plenty to learn about when and how to use it. In the next few videos, we will look more closely at some of the ways AI can work for you and what limitations you should keep an eye out for. Thanks for joining us and be sure to follow at MediaWise on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram to see all of our videos.